coming up tonight at 6. Close to 70 people are without a home tonight. We'll tell you about this intense early morning fire. And the 100 deadliest days of summer are over. Did we see an improvement on North Dakota roads this year when it comes to fatalities? Plus, new guidelines are in place to help protect those who can't always protect themselves. Putting North Dakota first. KX News at 6 starts now. Good evening, everybody. I'm Chad Mira. And I'm Lauren Culber. Thanks for watching KX News. In our top story tonight, breaking news. An individual who is thought to have measles does not. The initial test result for the person was positive. The health department following protocol sent samples to the CDC for additional testing and confirmation. That came back negative. Laboratory tests can sometimes produce false positives. However, the health department says this is rare. The department has determined the threat of measles for this specific situation to be over. Children and employees who are currently being excluded from school and other activities may return to school tomorrow. Other people contacted by the DOH about a potential exposure no longer need to watch for symptoms. People in a Williston apartment building had to run for their lives when a fire broke out early this morning. It started around 2 at the Dakota Apartments on 45th Street West in Williston. Many of the 32 apartment units in the building were occupied when the fire started. Everyone was able to escape safely as firefighters arrived and began trying to keep the fire in the attic of the 1505 building of the complex. The fire chief says about three dozen firefighters from all three fire stations in the city responded. We talked with one woman who lives in the adjacent building who also had to get out this morning. I'm a wildland firefighter and I got on an apartment um, late last year and I never thought that I would be in the predicament of like almost being stuck in one. So it was a little, little different, the irony. Again, there were no injuries reported in the fire, but about 70 people are left homeless. Many are finding shelter at a local hotel with the help of the Red Cross, which has provided financial help to 57 people. Investigators from the Williston Fire Department and the state fire marshal are work working to determine the exact cause of the fire, which left the 32 unit apartment building destroyed. New today, a vehicle drove into the Mouse River this afternoon. The incident happened sometime before 4 o'clock. The vehicle was driving east on Highway 2 just past the 52 bypass. And according to police, the driver suddenly drove into the ditch and went into the water. Officials on scene tell us there was only one person inside. The driver did make it out before the car became completely submerged. We spoke to witnesses on the scene who helped the man. They told us that he suffered from a medical episode and that was the cause. The incident is currently under investigation and the vehicle is being pulled out. The summer days between Memorial and Labor Day are known as the deadliest days of summer for teen drivers. In 2016, more than 1,000 teen drivers were killed in crashes nationwide. We spoke with North Dakota's Highway Patrol about fatality numbers during the summer months. Sergeant Wade Cattermas says this year has been an improvement from the last few years. North Dakota had 35 fatal accidents this summer, which is eight fewer than the summer of 2017. One of the things that really stood out to me as far as these past 100 days was the number of motorcycle crashes. Um, we had four or five more this year compared to last year as far as in that time span. The North Dakota Highway Patrol has been working to get fatal crash numbers to zero through their Vision Zero campaign. Through the campaign, officers have been promoting safe driving habits like wearing a seatbelt and not texting and driving. New requirements for child care providers in North Dakota begin October 1st. We're putting North Dakota first to see how these new background checks could make your child safer. The North Dakota Department of Human Services will implement two additional federal requirements to become a regulated and licensed child care provider. The first change will require all child care staff, regardless of age or position, to complete a comprehensive fingerprint-based background check. This will also include any volunteers who may have unsupervised access to children. Now, the second requirement is that no new staff members will be able to begin work until the department reviews their criminal history records. Neither of these two new rules are currently happening in the state. Once, the, once all of these federal requirements have been implemented, everything is in place, um, which will be as of October 1. Um, the goal is to help ensure the safety and the protection of children that are receiving child care or attending child cares throughout the state of North Dakota. 
If you want to learn more about the new requirements, we've put more on our KX News website for you. Just head over to myindynow.com. The Attorney General has finally voiced his opinion on Measure 3. Come November, voters will be left to decide if recreational marijuana should be legalized. Wayne Stencham says you should vote no. He helped to start a coalition called North Dakotans against the legalization of recreational marijuana. Its goal is to inform residents of what they're voting on, saying it is the most liberal rec marijuana legislation in the country. The chief law enforcement officer of North Dakota says voting yes would be a mistake. There are exceedingly uh, an exceedingly high number of unintended consequences. The measure is poorly drafted and not well thought out. It is bad for North Dakota. Now we spoke with Legalize ND about Measure 3 shortly after it received approval from the Secretary of State's office. They stand by the way it was written and expect if passed, the legislature will rework it into a feasible piece of legislation. It'll be a big debate heading into November. Now, North Dakota is considered a state with big bullying problems on school campuses. A recent report conducted by WalletHub ranked North Dakota the number sixth state in the U.S. where bullying is seen the most. The report compared 47 states on bullying prevalence, anti-bullying laws, and bullying impacts and treatment. We spoke to a school counselor at Ned Rose School in Minot on some of the techniques they use to combat the issue. Building relationships is, is the most important aspect of combating this issue um, you know talking you know whether that be with parents whether that be with students um, you know and, and just having a collaborative staff according to the survey louisiana arkansas and missouri are the states that have the most bullying minot residents could see a slight increase on their school related property taxes this year even though the school district is requesting a smaller amount of property tax money According to the Minot Public Schools business manager, the district will need just under $24 million from property taxes, about $190,000 less than last year. But because the city's tax base has decreased, each property owner will end up with an increase in taxes. The impact on a $200,000 home in Minot would be about $22.05 a year. Uh, in increase in school-related property taxes, assuming that their valuation didn't go up. You'll get a chance to comment on the school's budget October 4th. The University of Mary will get millions of dollars to protect against a landslide threat. The university said it needs to reinforce and stabilize the slope near the North Dormitory. Erosion there has moved to within 50 feet of the building. FEMA says the project will cost about $3.8 million. It'll give more than $2.8 million for the project. The university will cover the rest. We're attacking it pro proactively, and so any work that's done on the Hill uh, will prevent any future significant problems that, that could occur. Work still won't start for some time until engineers can get out there and figure out the best plan for the project. A small North Dakota town is being featured in the national spotlight after an unexpected commercial for the sandwich chain Jimmy John's. Welcome to Benford, North Dakota, population 172. Home of a brand new, out of the way place that makes freaky good sandwiches. Folks from all over the country are now getting a glimpse of Binford, North Dakota. It's a town about 60 miles north of Valley City. Jimmy John set up a pop up shop and filmed this commercial in farmer Dennis Haugen's wheat field. The commercial introduces its new nine grade grain bread. People who live there say the whole crew was very nice and they hope the commercial can provide a little exposure for their <laughs> small town. It, it is yeah. and it will. You know, we got a lot of those fields too, so bring some more <laughs> pop up shops. I like it. Coming up on KX News at 6, why now is the time to prepare for a disaster. And who, look who's back at their old stomping grounds, why these guys are patrolling the highways. Plus, let's take a live look outside right now. A nice, wonderful warm-up heading our way. We have the details coming up.
You're watching KX News, putting North Dakota first. September is National Preparedness Month, and this year's theme is Disasters Happen, Prepare Now and Know How. The Ward County Emergency Management Director Amanda Schooling says that you should create an emergency plan for all types of disasters. In those plans, you should cover shelter, evacuations, communication, and financial options. She also emphasized that people should enroll into the Code Red program. Code Red will notify you on your device of any emergency near your location, and it only takes about two minutes to enroll. Every day, every second is a good time to start thinking about it, writing stuff down, but it's just a time that we can really stress, you know, really should have a plan. And schooling adds that once you have your plan, make sure you practice it. Things always seem to be changing. Sometimes it's good, sometimes bad, but it's important to keep up, and that's why Senior Citizen Services is doing what it can to keep people informed at an expo today. Matthew Klein says he went because he's noticed an influx in scam calls and emails. It's his goal today that he'll learn some of the latest tactics so that he isn't an easy target. One of the scams he's received was something about his taxes, but he says scammers will never really say what they're calling about. There's so many things going on that you need to keep up with changes. There's so much going on with fraud and abuse. Uh, it's a fast-changing world. Other services included at the expo were medical, retirement, and insurance health. Some good information. Stay tuned still to come. Don't be alarmed. These guys are here because there isn't a problem. And here's another live look outside. Could there be some more rain or storms in your future? We're going to let you know coming up next. Now, your local weather with the KX Storm Team. Welcome back, everybody, for KX News at 6. We're taking a look at your almanac right now. High temperature here in Bismarck, 81 degrees, a little bit above your average. Record on this day, 103. Let's go up to Minot right now. Been a breezy day out there. We saw some storms fire off towards the east, even a severe storm earlier. 69 degrees in Minot, so cooler. And the wind out of the northeast here at 16 at miles per hour. Temperatures, look how warm it is back to the southwest. Dickinson, 87. 87 down in Hedinger. You move off towards the northeast and it's a lot cooler. There's 69 in Minot and even cooler still as you go out to where those storms are. A lot of rain cooled air. And yeah, no doubt that wind, one of the big stories today out of the south, 21 miles per hour in Bismarck, 
out of the south at 15 miles per hour in Hedinger. Let's look at your satellite and radar, and there are those storms that formed earlier today moving off towards the east. We also have been watching this area just to the west of Bismarck. Uh, Tom Schrader mentioned it in the 5 o'clock, this growing cumulus field uh, that has developed out in west central North Dakota. It's all along a little bit of a boundary, a warm front, and a storm did fire off of it really in the last 30 minutes. It got pretty strong quickly, and you could see a little bit of hail out of this. So communities Taylor and Richardson right now look to be under the gun with this storm. Not looking at severe, a severe storm, but possibly a little bit of small hail and some gusty winds with it. The reason these storms are firing, well, we have this warm front draped across the state, and that's also the reason why it's so much cooler off towards the north and so much warmer back towards the south. Now let's roll precision cast here. We're going to be going in towards the evening hours and again showing some of those storms firing off. They don't look to sustain themselves, so I don't think we're going to see much in the way of thunderstorms. They're going to kind of fizzle out as the night progresses. Now going into Friday, warm front continues to lift north. We'll be looking at some showers mainly towards the east part of the state. I think most of us will stay on the dry side for your Friday. Could be a few showers developing out towards the west, especially along the north here where that warm front sits. That warm front, however, will continue to lift north, bringing the better rain chances up into southern Saskatchewan and southern Manitoba. However, as we go in towards your Saturday afternoon, things get a little more interesting. We're going to start to see a surface trough develop, and there could be increased chances for thunderstorms by Saturday afternoon into late Saturday night. In addition, you can't see it, there's a cold front that will push on through, and I think where everybody will see some showers and thunderstorms, some of which could be strong, and uh, we'll be watching that, of course, uh, going in towards your Friday and in towards the first part of the weekend. 55 for an overnight low tonight in Bismarck. Possible storms, especially further east you go. Tomorrow morning lows, uh, 50s across the state here. Let's go ahead and take a look at your high tomorrow in Bismarck. Temperature getting up to 85, so another warm day. Pretty breezy out there as well, and we could see some windy conditions develop at times too. Highs tomorrow, looking at, look at that, mid to upper 80s out towards the southwest colder up towards the warm front there. Only 77 in Minot. Your harvest forecast, mostly sunny for tomorrow. Outside chance of a shower and thunderstorm with temperatures again getting up into the mid 80s. Looking at Minot and Williston, seven day, 77 tomorrow and an 81 degrees on Saturday. That wind will be kicking up out of the south as well before the cold front moves through. Good chance for some showers and thunderstorms. Bismarck, Looking at 84 degrees tomorrow, mostly sunny. I think we're going to stay dry, high of 84. And look at that, guys. We're going to stay in the low 80s through the weekend into early next week. Best chance for widespread uh, precipitation. Thunders are still looking late Saturday night. All right, pretty, pretty great stretch. Even temps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, amazing. Even temps. Yeah. Got All the right. rain comes. Got to get up. rid of that wind. <laughs> yeah. Coming up next in sports, why you marry's opponent this week might have a slight advantage headed into their home opener.
Now, KX Sports with Joey Lamar. This week's home opener for the University of Mary football team is a reunion of sorts between head coach Craig Bagnell and his former employer, Bemidji State. Bagnell served as Bemidji State's offensive coordinator from 2015 to 2017. With so much familiarity, one issue is how the offensive calls might change, as Bemidji's defensive coaching staff understands Craig's signals and how he likes to attack opponents. Today, I talked to Craig about the issue, and he said not to worry. Well, I know terminology-wise, everything's different, so we didn't keep the same terminology. We switched everything up, but uh, they're going to have familiarity with what we do offensively. Uh, you know, we have our base offense, and then we have our new stuff for them. You Mary's home opener is this Saturday at 2 p.m. at the MDU Resources Community Bowl. In high school football, we know playing on the gridiron is one of the toughest sports on the body. But for Bowman County's Jacob Swihovic, it was actually the baseball diamond that kept him off the field last year. Our Ken Kazaroski has the story. It took just one routine play. We were Babe Ruth Regional Tournament and I was rounded second and ripped off a muscle on my hip and I wasn't able to play. I was on crutches for four weeks. But it wasn't just four weeks. He needed physical therapy for several more. And before he knew it, football season had passed him by. It's kind of hard because no one I wanted to play this year because I went to a team camp before that and it was pretty good for the team. Even though he played basketball that winter, he says he was a little worried about his hip when it was time to play baseball again. My first hit, I got the second and I thought about it. And just thinking about how scary I was laying on the field, it was a terrible experience. But now as he leads a potent Bulldogs offense, he says his hip worries are a thing of the past. It feels like I'm 100% and nothing's ever happened to me. And he's working hard every practice to make up for lost time. Making the right plays, not missing like handoffs, stuff like that. I'm trying to be the best I can and help out the team. Reporting for KX Sports, I'm Ken Kozarowski. Bowman County takes on Kildare in a battle of undefeated teams tomorrow. In girls high school golf, so far the most impressive team in North Dakota are the girls at Century High School. Through five tournaments this season, the Patriots have won three, which is better than any other West Region team. The club's worst finish was third place at the Dickinson Invite. Even with their early season success, the girls still find areas of the game where they can improve. We're really working on short game and going out and playing and getting experience. It's going really well. The whole team's playing really well. Tomorrow, Century plays in the Bismarck High Invite at Tom O'Leary Golf Course at 10 a.m. And finally, UND football fans, we have a special treat for you. KX will air the Fighting Hawks game against Sam Houston State. The contest kicks off at 6 p.m. on September 15th. Exciting. Yeah, yeah, exciting times. You can always find something to work on on the golf course. I was yeah. Not me, though. I'm, Some I'm, more than others. I'm pretty good. Definitely you. Yeah. No, no, definitely not me. <laughs> okay. Some more than others. Coming up on KX News, why this officer was giving out high fives instead of tickets today. That story. And we've got one last look at your rain chances.
The Bismarck Police Department says don't worry if you see a patrol car parked at your kid's elementary school. Most likely it means one of their Adopt-A-Cop volunteers is on scene working to get to know the kids in our community. This is Solheim Elementary School, but the police department does their best to have a couple of officers at every elementary school in Bismarck. Both officer Michael Paulson and his partner officer Tony Keegan attended Solheim Elementary School years back. So now it's where they are stationed in the mornings as the first friendly face these kids see going to school. Police officers get a bad rap for things and kids see that on TV and uh, that's not really how it is. So we're here to help people. That's what we're here for. Officers not only greet the kids first thing in the morning, but sometimes they also stop by to eat lunch with the kids or talk with them about safety issues in schools. Great, Great idea. idea. A lot of emphasis on school safety this year. Now here's the last look at your forecast. Yeah, guys, keeping a close eye on the radar right now, zoomed into a storm that has formed just east of Dickinson. It's actually just gone over the Richardson area there, as you can see. A uh, storm may have a little bit of small hail, maybe up to penny size in it, uh, and maybe some gusty winds. So take note, looks like it's going to uh, move just uh, north there of I-94. Looks like it's going to go east-northeast, I would say, taking it between Glen Ullen and Bula there uh, within the next oh, 20 minutes or so. So if you are in the path of it, Maybe a little small hill, maybe some gusty winds. Okay, watch. So definitely keep an eye on it. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Thanks Dave. Dave. Thanks for watching. See you back here tonight at 10 o'clock.